Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all my non-binary friends, and welcome to my channel. My name is Sharvana, and I go by the she, her pronouns, and I am so excited today because this is the first time I will be ever watching Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't know anything about it. Nobody has been able to spoil it for me yet, and I am just so ready to share my first time experience with you. So this is going to be a watch along series, meaning you will have to have the media open up on a different tab and then have myself open up here on YouTube. Along together, we will hit play at the exact same moment. So we will be all timed up. I'll also have a little handy dandy timestamp down here for making sure we're all on the same speed. But this is going to be so that if you ever hit like a dramatic moment that you don't some want somebody to talk through, or if subs or dubs like get on your nerves one way or the other, we're going to be able to do different things in different places, but at the exact same moment, be watching the exact same content. So get ready with me as we go ahead and play today. But I am so ready for this. Are you? All right, everybody. This is season one, episode one of Jujutsu Kaisen, starting in three, two, one, play. I will snap my fingers when we get to an opener, but already we're going to have like some kind of kidnap scene and I'm in for it. Which one? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, here we go. Start the, the opener. Um, I am super into mystery things. If you guys don't know this about me already, I am... A super big into trying to figure things out and uh trying to like comment on that kind of stuff i'll try to keep it at a minimum so i'm not talking through the entirety of the show but i am going to say I, it looks like a whole bunch of spell uh a paper slips over here and having somebody already kidnapped at the beginning just already gives me like a feeling of like drama so let's see the literally the only thing i know about this is there's blue fire that's, that's it. That's all I know. So some kind of powers are in here at some point. Okay. And I can't tell if this person is blind or just wearing a blindfold. And he has a split personality. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited already, dude. I know that there's always just gonna be like a lot of running sequence opening. Got real guns. Got uh, monster demons. Split personality with a cheat. I, I don't know what the extra mouth is for, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Here we go. Episode one, Rio Men Suk Yuna, Suk Yuna. Grandpa in the hospital. It just looks like a bee hut. Why is that, why is that a problem? No bees. Where are the bees? Stevenson's screen is empty.
Okay, okay. Tricks. Ticks, ticks. You can't be a part of this. That's so fun. Oh, my goodness. Like, he's just trying to like, like uh, I, I need you. I need you. You cannot be at this cold club. This is the guy with the white hair, is it not? I think that was supposed to be in the bee hut. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. What reasons? Mm. Is he a car? <laughs> no, thank you. I love that. Love that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Seeing Rimpa. For the nurses. <laughs> 
<laughs> they gotta deal with you. <laughs> Go to your club. Chill out. Cute, cute. Oh, you Aww. Quite literally the opposite of don't be a hero. He just died? What a sad death. Dude. We don't even get to hear what, what he wanted to say about his parents, but at least like his, his grandkid was there. So he didn't see his parents die. Huh. Oh. Does most schools have negative feelings in them? Oh. Really? Oof. Tight, clinging to the box. Yeah, you told me like three times now, dude. So it's wrapped in protective talismans. Uh 
a finger. Ooh, I would not like that. Can he see it? I feel like he can see it, but I don't feel like the other guy can see it. I don't know how gory this, this show is going to be also. It feels kind of shonen y, so I don't feel like it's going to be super gory, but I honestly don't know. Are you being eaten? It's like a weird leechy thingy. Dog. Yeah, the other one you were in shock. This one you've been told it's going to happen. Yeah, agree. I just punched a curse in the face. What's that munching on the curse? He's probably got like a little bit of trauma from all that, but it's fine. Don't be stupid. Uh.
Are you a curse? Yeah, I'd be having nightmares too. You stab him with that? Oh my god, with your mouth? Don't eat it! Don't eat it! Oh my god! food at that point, but what the heck? And this is why you got kidnapped. <laughs> Oh no! Smeagol-like. Like, oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, I'm not gonna watch uh, previews for next time. That's gonna be for next time. And so it begins. I'm already fascinated that I think that our main villain is also going to be our main character. This is something that I had wanted from something like My Hero Academia. I thought the Sludge Monster would have taken him over in the first episode or first couple episodes. And uh, yeah, that he was going to be the main character the entire time. So having one of the main characters, if not the main character, be a villain at the same time this is gonna be interesting. Is it gonna be like a, a, a Venom type thing where we're gonna have him eventually like come to terms and like work with? I, do, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, but it seems very that. Uh, he already has extra eyes. I think I saw an extra mouth in the opener. I don't know what extra he has, but he got this through eating a cursed finger. Like quite literally finger food. And that just grossed me out when it happened. I was just like, okay, I know that this is gonna happen or something like this. I genuinely thought he was gonna stab the monster with his mouth holding the finger. And uh, either way, not disappointed. Not disappointed with how this ended up. I am going to not look up the names of these characters. So if I do get some of them wrong at the start, please forgive me. Or if I just call them based on like what they look like at the start, forgive me. Because I'm afraid if I start looking up characters and characters' names, I'm just gonna start like, accidentally spoiling things to myself. So I'm not gonna ask anybody about it unless you guys wanna tell me in the comments, um, and I will use that as a reference for next time, but, uh, or at least the next time I, I start filming these. Um, but it seems like Itadori, 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 um, the main character is somebody that is very, very highly skilled. He says he already knows about a curse, like he's already cursed. 
what was that all about? Was that something that he was talking about with his, his grandfather right there? Or was it something that he has previous? That's something I don't know. If it is going to answer these questions in the show, please don't spoil it for me. Uh, these are just my thoughts and things I want to talk out loud. So first we have that. But then we have this black haired character that is following him around everywhere. He obviously is in the know of the Jutsu Kaisen. Um, he's obviously in the know about cursed objects and whatnot. And he, we kind of got an explanation there. So as I understand it, Every place that assumes that they're going to have curses has a curse to ward off other things. Uh, I'm also just reiterating it here just so that I'm fully on board, and if I am not on board, please explain differences to me. But they ward off smaller curses, but eventually when they become bigger from these smaller curses, like eating them or whatever, the bigger curses are like, oh, I'ma go there. So what's the point of having a curse anyway? Why not just have somebody that's able to repel them. Do we not have enough of those people? Do we not have uh, whatever this, this character is? Is this character not also cursed? Because one, we've seen him with white hair. At least I'm pretty dang sure it's the same person. It's the same hair kind, a styling, just different color. So are they also cursed? I don't know yet. Um, so when they put on a blindfold or something, they just go full on white hair. I, that's my theory anyway. That's what I think. Um, but we have that going on. We have the curses that will eventually draw more things in, but it's only, okay. So if you have one of these like spider curses, like he said, it has to be wrapped in talismans to keep it safe. Cause if you open it up, it just like draws everything else in. I, I'm wondering what causes everything to draw it in. Is it just not having that protective boundary on it? And that's what he was there for, perhaps to like rewrap it in another talisman to keep it safer. That's what I'm, I'm trying to find out his purpose here. What is he doing? How is he cursed? Also, how is Itadori cursed? Um, just, I just need to know. A really sad moment that we got to see was the grandpa's death. Like, I don't think grandpa is going to be involved with all of this. But I don't know, because we didn't get to hear what his dying words were about his, uh, uh, Itadori's parents. So I don't think he's gonna know too much about that kind of stuff. Uh, but what a way to die. What a sad, sad ending. It, it's, it's, it's a typical ending in a hospital bed and everything, but the last thing he said is like, don't die like I did, not surrounded by people. Be a hero, basically. And that just is like, ouch! Ouch, you may be a grumpy old man, but ow, dude, Oh, I like the occult club members. I don't think the occult club members are going to last through the series. I don't know if they will or not. I'd love to get to know them even better, uh, but I think they're cute for the time being. They're either gonna end up being like the ultimate sidekick characters, or this is gonna be a one-off where they're like, done, occults, they're weird. Not, not into trying to die over here. So there's that. And I guess we did learn that there was something up with the rugby team. So I wonder if they're also going to be like cursed by proxy because we already are in the hospital and we were told that the rugby team was in the hospital. So it's like, are they going to be cursed by proxy of what is going down there? So there could be another storyline potential going that direction too. I don't know. I'm really excited to learn more. I'm, I've watched 20 minutes of this show so far, so I'm like very in the new. I am very excited to see where this is going. I'm on board with it. I don't understand why Ichidori also could see everything yet before he had eaten the finger. So if most people cannot see that stuff, could the cult members? I, the occult members? I believe they could because they were the ones being attacked. Maybe they, because they touched the item. I don't know. I don't know. There's so much more to have explained to me. And I'm very excited to continue on with this. So thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye for now. Mwah!